Episode 35 here of Let's Go Racing with David Starr. We're joined by 1990 Daytona 500 winner Derek Cope. Derek, let's go back to that day in 1990. Walk us through that last lap of that 1990 Daytona 500 victory. You know, it's um, it's like it was yesterday. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's so. I mean, it's so it makes such a major impression on you. You know, you still. Um, you, you think back of all the things leading up to the race and, you know, all the peril we'd kind of gone through and things that happened. And then, you know, Buddy Parrott just telling you and, and just trying to drum it into your thick little brain, you know, that, <laughs> hey, look, you know, um, just be there at the end. You know, we have a good enough car to win this race. You just got to take care of it. He said, we'll have a shot at the end. I said, you just pedal this thing, take care of it. And we'll be in a position to win late in the race. And that's all you can ask for, you know. And uh, he's, and I mean, I remember he told me, he said, I, you know, like we were out there for like happy hour and practice. He said, I want you to follow Earnhardt. I don't care if he goes to the bathroom. He said, you follow him into the bathroom. I want you to, I mean, you just chase, do everything he does, learn and just parasite as much as you can. And we're going to be there come Sunday, you know. And sure enough, you know, down to the end of the race, I pedaled the car all day, uh, kept it out of trouble, ran the top five pretty much all day, led the race. Um, run second mostly, um, but always was just kind of taking care of it, just giving more than I took. And then at the end, you know, we didn't take on tires that last stop. And, you know, I'm on used tires. He's got new tires. And, you know, I had pedaled the car all day. And then the last, whatever, seven, 10 laps, I'm wide open. I'm, I'm hanging on as she's loose. I mean, the last time, if you watched any kind of video, I had told Buddy this thing's loose and we need to tighten it up. And what's Buddy do? He knocks the spoiler down. <laughs> and I spoiled her down on the, on the last stop. Right. And I'm like, huh, I guess this is what I got, you know? And then, you know, I just, you know, I'm wide open. I got Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott right back there, you know, wow. and they're trying me down the back straight away. They don't got nothing for me. So I realized then that it really is Earnhardt and myself and Terry and Bill didn't really have much together for me. And I knew that. So I just concentrate on trying to get as much momentum built up, be on his back bumper, kept going the high side, thinking maybe he'd go up and I could go to the bottom for a lap and try to just pin the thing to the bottom. And that's what I did. Uh, the last lap on his bumper going in turn one, I uh, got loose, kind of chased it up the hill, lost a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, space, you know, he gapped me a little bit, but I had a big run off the high side and started mounting it up. You know, I had a steam going down into turn three and I said, I'm going to the bottom, no matter what, I'm pinching this thing down. I had, you know, I had that baby to go left and lucky I did because when we drove off in there, it was kind of that days of thunder look, you know, that slow motion <laughs> thing where his car starts to get sideways and then I'm gaining on him, you know, and next thing I know I said, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to wreck, you know, I mean, my, I was had such a closing rate coming in there and all of a sudden his car just wiggled and he went right out of my sight and I drove right by him and I was like, man, I looked in my mirror and I said, them guys don't have anything for me. This is mine. I said, just leave it wide open and we got this thing. And, you know, from that point on, it was total pandemonium. You know, the, the radio's just screaming and carrying on and just uh, just an elation, you know, of, of a flooding of emotion, you know. And, uh, you know, all I could think about was my dad and, you know, what we had, been, what we had done together, you know. Man, that's so cool. To, man, man, is it gay guys? Is that cool? Man, oh, absolutely. I mean, no, wow, I that's 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 awesome. I mean, right. I, I got chills hearing that, Derek. Man, I, that, I could like, picture myself in the car with you there on that last half. Yeah. I can still hey, feel can you, the I can still feel the sun on my face in Victory Lane. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. And you can take you can put yourself back there. You know what I mean? Because I mean, it's just everything. I mean, ten years. I started nineteen eighty, really, and you know, ten years later, you won the biggest thing that can happen to you. And that's a life-changing moment. I mean, really, I mean, your life as you knew it, you know, it's changed at that point in time. And it's, you know, it's changed my life. And, um, you know, I'm just, I've been blessed, you know. Absolutely. And I have to ask you after that, did Dale come up and talk with you or even to expand on that? What was yours and Dale Earnhardt's relationship like? Uh, it was really the next race that we really, uh, you know, got an opportunity to kind of, you know, at least, you know, broach the subject, right? Um, he's walking towards me and I'm walking towards him and I just come in the garage and, you know, he don't even smile, you know, he's just coming right at you, you know what I mean? You're thinking, oh, here we go, right? You know, <laughs> he just comes up and he hits me with his shoulder, you know, and, you know, he says, congratulations, you know, and um, I told him thanks, you know, and I said, you know, I, I, uh, I really don't know what to say other than the fact that I just hope that you can win this one day because, you know, it, it really, 
is something special to go through. And for me, it's been a life changing experience, you know, and I said, I just, uh, I hope that it happens for you, you know, I said, you're, you're de deserving of it. And he goes, well, he said, you know what? He said, it's not the Daytona 499. He says the Daytona 500, <laughs> wow. you know, we'll win ours, you know? Yeah. And at that point, I mean, that was it. And we never spoke about it again, but it was like, you know, he had come to terms with it and he kind of gave me my, you know, my just do. And, you know, and he, I, by saying that, I mean, that was him just saying, look, you know what, you gotta, you gotta run all 500 miles. And uh, you know what, it just wasn't his day. And, and he took it. I know it was tough on him, but um, you know, I gained a lot of respect for him, the manner in which that, uh, you know, that he dealt with that.